Boy. All right, so what we got, what we're going to do today is we're going to install Samba, right? So Samba's got some twitches. Of all the prog of all the programs you're going to load, Samba carries the most security risks. Just letting you know this up front. So apt get install Samba. S A M B A, if I can spell correctly this morning. App get install Samba. Go through, check the tree, grabs, checks all the extra packages you're going to need, and yes, you want to continue. Unless you're root already. Pseudo Sue, remember her? Pseudo Sue and Pam. Two coolest characters in Linux land ever. Pseudo Sue and, and oh, Pam. Pam. Yep. Yeah. I'm not going to work with Pam very well. She doesn't like to work. You know, I've noticed that, and and well, the interesting part is Amelia's class. Um, people have actually locked themselves out of their computer because they put the keys in the wrong spot. Um, so, <laughs> really? That's yes. great. That's awesome. So I'm really happy you're not one of those lucky winners. All right. All right. So. If you go into Etsy Samba, you're going to see two files. SMB.conf is the one we want to go play around with. Nano SMB.conf. I'm actually going to edit this bad boy. All right, so this is your edit. This is your main configuration file. This is where all the goodies are kept, right? And this includes plain text passwords and user accounts. Really? Yes, really. Really, and this is why Samba is used, but I really think they need to kind of do a little bit more stuff with Samba to make sure it's a little bit more secure. All right, changes to the work group or NT domain name, all right, that your Samba will be part of. So right now it's set for work group, so if we made it like rack three, rack four, highline.edu, so if you wanted to, you could change this into instructor.cis217.highline.edu, and then we become part of a domain. Right. So how it will be like rec 6 dot highline.edu? Yep. Yep, so that all your computers will recognize this domain. So yes, sir. Does that, mean, does that mean match your domain name? It yes, it needs to match your domain name. That's why this is one of the last components that we load up, because we have to have everything else working correctly to make this thing work right. All right. Server string, NT description field. Right. Basically, it's just going to say that it's Samba Ubuntu. Do we want to do Win support? Right. If you're running Wins, then the answer to this is yes. If you're not running Wins, the answer to this is no. Um, if you have a Win server, you have to put in their IP address. All right. So whoever your Active Directory is going to be, and they're running Wins, this is what you want to put in there. All right. Do we want to search for NetBIOS names through DNS? No, we don't want to go ahead and proxy that. If you do want to do that, then this becomes a DNS proxy. So your DNS has to know everybody that's internal by name. All right. What naming service and what order should be used to resolve host names? Basically, LM host, host, and then wins, and then broadcast. In other words, I'll look up local, I'll look up local again, then I'll look at the wins directory, and then I'll look and just do a broadcast who's got blah, blah, blah. So who's Josh? Josh is really at this IP address. Networking, if you have, again, your interfaces, you can specify specific interfaces to work on this. So you can bind it. If you just do 127.0.0.0, ETH0, it just says I'm going to be on the network of whatever IP address that I currently find myself on. Right? But if you want to have a specific network that this works on, you can actually go ahead and like put this in a DMZ, you can put this in a HR, you can make this specific to a, to a network if you wanted to. Bind, do we only want to use bind? Bind interfaces only yes, right? Now understand that if you enable this, your Samba machine is not protected by a firewall. All right, so this turns off firewall protection for Samba, and that opens up all the Windows happy ports. 136, 137, 135, 445, and all the rest of it. So this starts behaving and looking like a Windows box in terms of working with NetBIOS and in terms of working with Winds and in terms of participating in a fun, happy network Windows environment. All right, but understand that your firewall will not do anything for you now for this program. It opens up all sorts of fun, happy things that can really mech up your day. Do you want to do debugging? Just tell Samba to use a separate log. I really recommend that you do a separate Samba log. 
right? Because you're going to see a whole lot of attempts to get in through this log. So make sure that it is logging in this file, right? Cap the size of the individual log at, at basically one megabit, and then it will roll over every time you hit that log cap. Do you want Samba to only log through syslog and then set the following to yes? If you want to dump it into syslog and get it all mixed up with all your other stuff, I would recommend that you sit, keep this at no, right? Because you, if your Samba logs are clean and just for Samba, it makes it a whole lot easier to go through and debug and make sure everything's happy. Yes, sir? Never mind. I said, where's the log file? I'm going to type it. The log files are in var log Samba. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. All right. Um, do we want to log a minimum amount of information? All right. If you can change this around, zero is good, right? Zero will basically log all the failed and good attempts to get into the system, but it won't take you all the way down to debug. All right. Do something sensible when panic crashes, when or when Samba crashes. It's basically going to send an email, right? It's going to send an email to root and call it good. So if Samba crashes, it's going to panic, freak out, and send an email to root. So you should monitor the root email. Mm -hmm. Do something sensible. All right. So security user is a good idea, but it will require a Unix account for everyone that accesses this server. Right? That means a local password, shadow, local host, username, and password if you say that. Right? You can use password encryption. I really recommend that you do. Right, so this is already set to do encrypt passwords true. That way we don't get to read their passwords plain text because we really don't want to read plain text passwords unless we're breaking in and then that's more fun, right? Obey Pam, obey Pam, yes, always obey Pam because Pam is awesome, All right? Password backend, uh, this opens up a new password database that hackers will want to know about, TD, TDB SAM. Right, and that's going to be in your SE directory. So if I snag that, if I grab that file, I can offline decrypt all the passwords in Samba. So just that you know that you want to kind of keep this a little bit more, just like you would with your password and your shadow, you now have a third file to play around with. Unix password sync, yes. This controls whether Samba attempts to sync the Linux password with the system message block password, right? So yes, it will try to sync those your Windows password with your Linux password. The only problem is going to be is if your passwords get out of sync, it's going to have to go up to the Active Directory to get the Windows password <coughs> to verify the user. Yes, sir. So with Sam involved, does it open up the SMB attack? Oh, yes. Yes, it does. It does all sorts. Again, this turns this into a nice, happy, participating fun member of a Windows network. And Thank Sam has got issues. Mm -hmm. Sam has got some serious issues, which is why we want her to obey Pam. All right, so Unix password sync, yes. For Unix password sync to work, right, you have to have it pointed off to user bin password and prompt the user for the new password to make sure that they're all hooked in correctly, right? So if you change your Windows password, this thing should automatically prompt you to change the password as well. All right, this Boolean controls whether Pam will be responsible for password changes. The answer to this is should always be yes, all right? We really want Pam involved in this. Because if they blow it, then it's going to show up in your off log, <coughs> right? And then map to guest equals bad user. So if you have guest, option controls how unsuccessful authentication attempts are mapped to anonymous connections. They get shoved into bad user. If you do not want to have guest, you won't have bad user. It will just blank them off, right? So we don't want guest accounts, and we'll turn those off here in a little bit. Do we want to use domain logins? Yes. Right? So you have to have your domain up and running before you install Samba to finish configuring it up. All right, without that, it makes your kind of painful. Simple login path, <laughs> profiles, standard Windows kind of happy fun domain stuff, and then the login path goes through. The login script, right, is your login command script, which is run whenever someone logs in. Fairly simple, straightforward thing here. All right, this allows Unix users to be created in a domain controller via the SAMR RPC pipe. Now, one of the fun, happy ways of getting into a computer is through remote procedure calls, RPCs. All right, and it's a piping function. It's a little bit different than a parent-child or a little bit different than a threading model. All right, so if I can make a user in Samba, that user will automatically replicate up to the Active Directory. 
things to be aware of. If I can go in and pipe that process and inject my command into that, then you'll find a new user in your Active Directory that will be part of that domain, a participating member of the domain. So then we also have add group, right? So this does the whole group, user add, groups, and everything else that goes along with it. Printing, do you want to use this as a print server? Do we want to load up printing? Um, in this instance, no, we're not going to do printing out of Samba, right? So just leave this how it is. Um, it does set up for BSD printing on LPR. There are a couple active attacks for the BSD LPR process. And then there's CUPS. Does everybody know what CUPS is? Remember CUPS? So CUPS is just another printing service just like LPR. LPR is the <laughs> old line printing daemon, right? I mean, really old as in like all the way back to the Emacs, VAX, VMS style. CUPS is the more modern version of it. Miscellaneous, right? Include home Samba SE SMB comp. Include this file, right? Most people find this option gives them better performance if you just go ahead and leave the sockets open, right? So I wouldn't change anything on this, right? Because speed sometimes isn't going to matter with this one, all right? Following parameters is useful only if you have a lin pop up package. We do not have one, all right? So I'm going to recommend that you comment that one out. All right, because we really don't want to do pop-ups. We're trying to teach people not to do pop-ups. All right, domain master auto, I would leave this off. So you don't have to worry about this thing automatically resetting itself to a new domain master. All right, you're going to want to go in and manually do that. Unless you're going to face an outage, you know that you're going to close down your Active Directory domain and spin up a new one or you're going to do a DC promo somewhere in there. And there's things. When bind, make sure that you're not using something else. So it's basically using the user ID of 10,000 to 20,000 and the group ID of 10,000 to 20,000. And it's gonna make them a bin bash shell. So if I can go in and make my user account through Samba, all of a sudden I've got everything I would wanna have. I have a domain account, I've got a local account, a shell account on top of it. So yeah, this is a fun program to do horrible things with, right? Do you want to be able to, the user to enumerate groups and users? Yes, right, because it has to be able to know who's who and what's what. Max shares 100, right? If you have a lot of people, then 100 isn't going to be enough. You want 1,000, but if you only have a couple hundred people, uh, <coughs> make sure that your shares, the amount of shares you have, is representative of the <coughs> maximum number of people that's going to be logged into your box. User share allow guests. Allow users who have just been granted user share to create public shares, not just authenticated ones. We want to change this to no. Guests should do nothing. Guests are evil. They will take over your computer. They will do horrible <coughs> things to you. Um, they will alter the trajectory of planets and they'll make asteroids cross and crash into the Yucatan Peninsula. All right, so user, guest users are horrible. So don't let guests do a darn thing, right? Do we want home directories browsable? No, we do not want people to be able to browse through other people's home directories. This is a bad idea. So if you change that to yes, then I can basically browse through anything that Sam is serving as a guest, All right? Exported read only, yes, we want them to be read only, right? Even if we're gonna do this, but we don't wanna make, we wanna make sure this isn't set to write because if I can write to someone else's random directory, then I can upload code. I can upload scripts. I can do all sorts of other fun things. All right? File creation mass, 700. So when you set this up, right, the owner is the only one that can read, write, execute on that. Everyone else has got no permissions on that share. If you want more people to have different permissions, 755, 744, however you want to do it. All right? But I would leave it at 700. Right, same thing with the directory creation mask. You just want to make sure that your group root permissions are set to 700 so you don't have to worry about it. If you're using an external validation scheme, kind of leave this here, but we're really not doing that right now. All right, do we want to create a net login? No, we're going to be okay with that because we don't really want to do any kind of net logins on this because we don't want to configure Samba to act as a domain controller too because that's a bad idea. 
Do we want them to create profiles? Profiles are okay, but again, the problem is, is that they already are gonna get a user account. We don't really need to be able to export their profiles back and forth. People can use printers. Printers are not browsable, which is a good idea. Again, everything should be set to 700. Um, a lot of people set this down to 755 or 777 because it's easier to manage and maintain. So if you guys run into a real Samba configuration <laughs> file, like on someone else's computer, make sure all the permissions are set to 700. Why 755 or 777? Just, oh, so anybody can do Anybody can do anything. I don't have to worry about it. It's an easy troubleshoot fix. And somebody doesn't have to come in yeah, exactly. So if I create it 777, it's an easy troubleshoot fix. People can just go do whatever they want to do. I don't have to sweat it. It takes a couple of seconds instead of really figuring out what's going on, right? So yeah, it is a very easy troubleshoot fix. And I'm not saying that some people are lazy, but lazy system administrators will set their NAS to 777 and not sweat it. They totally ignore the security issues that go around with someone being able to read, write, execute as a guest especially when they've turned off guest on their windows boxes but they leave guest wide open on their samba boxes which is honking sweet <coughs> right printer drivers can guests see it no no because guests are what uh, evil all right we left yet above. yep all right uncomment to allow remote administration of windows print drivers no i don't want to allow remote administration of windows print drivers right do we want to share my CD-ROM on my box with other people? No. No. So. No. Me. Yeah, I guess. Guess okay? No. Right? So, no. <coughs> no. No, lots of no. Right, and again, next, this is how it will mount all the rest of it. So, that's basically no worries there. And that's basically it for the Samba configuration file, right? And then when you've got it all marked out, save it, and you're good. Then what do you want to do to restart? Service, Oh, cool, Samba isn't in here. Yeah, but no, it's just basically restart the service. But that's it. That's all there is to Samba. Awesome. So it's a fairly straightforward kind of thing, but the whole idea is that it comes wide open in the configuration file. You just want to make sure your configuration file is locked down because guests are evil. Having <laughs> netmasks beyond 700 is evil. Samba is evil. Your firewall won't help you because it opens up all those ports in your firewall, so Samba is evil. Right? It can seriously degrade all the security and you get a third password configuration file that a lot of people aren't familiar seeing. Right? So, you guys ready to go install Samba? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. Is this the best thing since donuts in classroom? Yes. No. <laughs> no. Donuts are way better. Whatever. Alrighty. So this is the last component. This is the last component that we need to learn how to install. After this, we can start working on the company and working on how you want to design your racks and all the rest of it. There's um, two computers on the, on the bottom row. One of them has a hard drive, one of them does not. The one that doesn't have a hard drive is yours. Neither of these have a hard drive. Oh, that means the Amelia's classes start taking out their hard drive, sweet. So there should be one marked Amelia and one not marked? Or one marked Dan? Wow, you're just a lucky winner. We'll fix that. We'll fix that. But that's pretty much so it, right? So Samba, pretty straightforward. Just app get install Samba. Go through the SMB config. Make sure everything guest is off. Make sure all your net masks are 700. Turn off anything that has to do with guests, and you'll be good. So you guys ready? On your... <laughs> You're already done. Yeah. Well, then you can help other classmates. You just got promoted to teacher's aid. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So go to it. Have some fun with it. Where do I find the SMB configuration file? Underneath Etsy Samba. Okay.